think that you're going to really enjoy being part of the channel. So like the video and subscribe to the channel. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and jump right back on screen as we get ready for our next topic. We're going to be talking this time about real estate and we want to discuss ways in which you can become a real estate agent, your first steps to real estate success. So let's go ahead and talk about this. If you want to become a real estate agent, there are several steps that you must take. This include purchasing a home, purchasing a real estate agent and tax consideration. Before you begin, you need to have a business plan and a clear set in strategy about your goals. So let's talk about working with a mentor and how you can learn more about the real estate business. Now, buying a home, making an offer to buy a home is a psychological process. Both the seller and buyer want to get the best price. The conventional rule of thumb is that start at 5% below asking price. However, the amount of wiggle room you have will depend on the market conditions. Now, if the market is hot, you may face several offers that may be disadventurous and um, pretty hard on the negotiation hand. On the other hand, if the market is slow, you may have more bargaining power. Now, after choosing a property, the next step is negotiating the terms of mortgage. You will be required to sign a closing disclosure, which is a document that describes the terms and cost of your loan. Now, this document is important to review before signing the contract. Closing day is the day where the seller and buyer sign the final papers and transfer the funds. Now, after the closing, you receive the keys to your new home. Before making an offer on your home, though, you should research the neighborhood thoroughly. You should check out the crime rates, the school rankings, and home values and any planned developments in the neighborhood. Now, these factors can help you determine whether a particular property is the right one for you. You should also consult with a real estate agent. Now, before meeting with a loan officer, you should take time and take this time to research your financial options. The home buying process moves quickly, and you may not have enough time to thoroughly analyze your financial options. If you're not prepared, you may end up settling for your first loan that's offered to you. Now, this could mean missing out on a lower rate or better loan program. So become a real estate agent and utilize your availability and the possibility of learning about this. Now, if you don't want to become a real estate agent, you don't have to, but this is another great step that you could do to learn more about the organization and real estate and even more into real estate investments. So you can join a brokerage. Now, this will help you find clients and market yourself as well as give you Valuable real estate experience. Now, before you join a brokerage, it's important to understand and select the right ones for your needs. So look for a potential brokerage that provide office space, educational um, opportunities, and reasonable fees. In addition to talk, uh, excuse me, taking real estate courses, it's important to invest in side sales. Now, business cards, a website. You should also make sure you're available for questions, questions that your clients may have and you're ready to jump into bidding wars. Now, once you have chosen a real estate agency, you want to market yourself to start earning. Real estate brokerage will often pay their agents pretty well. That means they're more likely to make a commission than a regular agent. It's important to remember that a brokerage can only be profitable as the person behind it. A brokerage can help you find a buyer or seller. Now, by learning the process of buying and selling property can be a success as far as becoming a real estate agent. Now, to become a real estate agent, you should pass a background check. The background checks for various different things, and these are going to vary by state, but typically include a criminal record check and a fingerprint search. Depending on your state, you may also have to pass a licensing exam. The exam will cover the legal requirements for the listing and selling of properties, as well as financial and professional responsibilities. Now, once you've passed a real estate license, licensing exam, it is time to learn how to market yourself as a real estate agent. In addition to learning how to sell homes and land, you need to also understand how to create successful lead generation strategies. Now, you can also use this as a transferable skill. It doesn't necessarily have to remain and strictly be a part of real estate, but transferable skills um, in a sense of lead generation strategies can be helpful in just about any millions of making money online. Now, you will want to learn about housing market and industry trends. Articles written about the real estate industry are a great resource or learning about these topics. Now, tax consideration for real estate investing is important as well. Now, when you invest in real estate, you must consider a number of tax considerations. One of these is the amount of passive income you can deduct. Passive income is any income that is not actively participant, such as rents and limited partnership stakes. 
Passive income is especially relevant to real estate investors since they can duck their losses against other passive income. Now, this is called depreciation. Now, passive losses cannot be deducted against active income or wages. Okay, now why there are tax advantages to investing for real estate, it's important to be aware of complexities of the tax code, which is really something that I highly recommend you get a great lawyer who specializes in real estate to help you out with this, particularly one in your state. Now, even if you're an expert on tax law, not everyone has the time and the knowledge to understand it all. That's why it's a good idea to work with a professional tax advisor before buying your first investment property. That is very true. Now, this professional can guide you through the purchase and operation of your investment property and avoid any unpleasant surprises that come um, with tax. Now, coming from a family of lawyers, I can say this. When it comes to professionals, the lawyer is going to know more than the tax professional, um, usually um, if they specialize in tax. So I would highly recommend a lawyer when it comes to a real estate tax over the um, real estate agent who specializes in um, tax. Sometimes it sometimes it's off, but if I had to go on a, a scale probabilities, I would choose the lawyer. Okay. Additional tax consideration for real estate investing is whether you are an individual or partnership. If you're an individual, you must pay taxes on any investment income. The IRS defines what types of income are considered investment income. Investors who are high earners may have to pay a federal government net income tax, NITT, NIIT, excuse me, which applies at about 3.8%, which gives different types of investment help. Now, IRS regulations clearly are for those who need to pay the NIIT and the rates you have to pay depend on the filing status and your modified AGI, adjusted gross income. So keep this in mind as well as you are getting involved in real estate. So lots of ways to make money as a real estate um, owner and investor, um, particularly if you buy property, you want to live in that property for a certain amount of time and then move out by doing an FHA loan or conventional loan. All those options are on the table and are available. Now you can also buy a property with the intent of starting it through a um, a business, having that deed be an LLC and using that property to rent out or using it as a Roth IRA account. These are all options that are viable as well. So keep in mind, there's a lot of different ways that you can utilize real estate to make money as an investor, or you can utilize it, as a long-term retirement, I mean, we're still, we're still talking about investing here, but if you want something more volatile or more long-term, there's different options available. So keep that in mind when you're doing your real estate. And um, hopefully you've really enjoyed yourself with some of this information. We're going to go ahead and move forward with our next one. Welcome, welcome.